Josef, wir müssen kochen. Offensichtlich hat er denselben Geschmack für Würstchen wie für seine Anwälte. Nur die allerbesten. Mit genau der richtigen Menge an Schmalz. I uh, dressed a little smarter today for all the Frauleins out there. Ja, magst du Nietzsche? There are zero women on this channel. It is 100% men, 18 to 24 specifically. Now, today I just want to kind of go over the fact that Germany makes no sense to me. Okay, that's kind of misleading. Uh, Ger Germany makes sense to me, right? But over these past few months, I've been studying a lot of German history, German culture, because I've been learning the language and whatnot. Also, got a couple friends there. Uh, and when I went traveling, there were multiple hostels where there were so many German people that they only spoke German. And I will not be left out of these conversations. Ja? Verstehe mich? I've been, so I've been studying the language and I've been studying the country. And what endlessly has been fascinating me is this... Is the fact that Germany exists. I can't emphasize enough how many like miracles had to happen for Germany as a country to just exist. Much less dominate the continent in either financially or militarily or any of the other ways uh, it dominated the continent up until, well, I guess including that one time, but we're not going to talk about that one time. So we're we're just gonna we're that's what we're gonna talk about. We're we're gonna talk about Deutschland and all the little little bits and pieces throughout history, geography, all that stuff that just kind of came together and the right combination at the right time to make Germany into the thing that it is today, or rather the thing that it was in like the 1870s more so. Because um, yeah, I don't I I my knowledge just kind of drops off. Uh, after like 1900 what 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 did the germans say Lo, los gets los gets i like to make walks in the morning time yeah with my legs and i was walking this morning yeah around here and i see in two two guys two guys they are i think they are hobos hobos uh you know uh, men of the streets and they are they're making an argue, you know, fight, 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 not with uh, fisties, with mouth, mouthies, you know, just very rude and things. And then one man say, man, suck my d Before we start, I'm Alexander Hill. Uh, I write books. I've not published any because uh, it takes way too much money to self-publish. So I'm, I'm just, uh, just waiting on those query replies. And uh, if you do me, if you be so kind as to do me the favor of hitting the buttons, you know the ones, the, the algorithm bullshit. I do stuff about, I make weird rants about history, writing, world building, plan to do little philosophy, little martial arts, little, you know. Yeah, without further ado. Let's get started. I also want to mention that I'm not like an expert on anything. I'm I'm probably going to get stuff wrong, but if I do, I'll, I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out on my own, right? Yeah, yeah, cool. Also, this is just for fun. Don't don't be that guy. What? You why you say that what? This is making no stick. Why are you say this? This is a silly. This is a silly and danger. So you, you are saying to the man, listen, you, we are not friends. We have made establish of this from all of this argumentating prior. But please now take my most valuable uh, sensitivity possession in my body. It have no protection. It have no helmet or something. No, no. It's just flopsy and and, and sensitivity. Please take it, because we are not friends. What? Uh, and place it inside now a hole of you that is owning many many uh, objects for crunching and destruction. All right. So first, I want to start off with some stuff that you know falls in Germany's favor as a, like conceptually as a country, right? Um, and that kind of is geography right 
Berlin is located between the Spree and the Havel rivers, which are very nice, and it's very close to the Oder, which puts it smack dab in the middle of like three river systems, and it's probably one of the best place capitals if you want to make some kind of financial superpower, and that's just the capital. Germany also uh, has the Rhine in it, which is Western Europe's economic powerhouse. And they also have access to the Danube, which is the longest river in Europe, empties out into the Black Sea, and is one of the few that flows southward. They got plenty of room to project influence down through the Balkans, which, you know, depending on whether or not you want to do that, debatable. In terms of climate and land, they're a lot like Ohio. So, land-wise, pretty good. Corn Great for corn and only corn. corn. And climate-wise, it's pretty, it's pretty temperate. It's pretty livable. It's, it's some bad days, uh, but mostly mild weather, except for that one week of the year. Well, I'm proud to be an American, where at least I have a seat. And that's kind of where the good stuff of uh, Germany's geography just kind of ends, right? Because uh, you got <laughs> you got some other problems with that geography, right? Um, they've got no peninsular borders, uh, unlike Spain or Denmark or, uh, no, not France, Italy, where three sides of your country are surrounded by water or, you know, small states on the edge. Ooh or small states on the edge of a peninsula, um, which, you know, immediately lets you focus all your all your threats into, like, one... one. You guys know the story of 300, eh, all the, like, hot gates, 300 dudes, stop 10,000 Persians. You know, it's same principle of battle tactics, but with, uh, with, with peninsulas. Germany's also smack dab in the middle of the North European plain, which is, uh, Pretty damn flat. They have an indefensible border to the east with Poland, and Poland also has an indefensible border to the east with Russia and Belarus. They got France to the west, who has, you know, been around for forever, and you got Austrians to the south, which re in recent eras, not that big of a deal, but, you know, back in the day, fucking Habsburgs, Austro-Hungarian Empire... May not have been the most stable thing in the world, but it was big and scary. And then you got Scandinavia to the north, which that that'll come into play later. And I know the, the first thought when you think Scandinavia is a threat, you think Vikings, right? Well, Vikings did do some stuff in Germany, but they weren't really a huge problem. The main problem has to do with water, which we'll get to eventually. Or, oh, I guess we're getting to it right now. Prussia slash Brandenburg, the state that would eventually come to form Germany, had zero access to the water until 1720. No ocean access at all. And that ocean access they got in the 1700s came on the Baltic Sea, which, uh, if you've ever seen Denmark, bas basically a giant pond without Denmark's permission to leave. And then just outside of that is the North Sea, which is one of the most historically dangerous seas on the planet due to both natural forces and, uh, well, back in the day, due to an English presence, which we all, we all know, uh, you know the English, their navy, Right, I'll tell you what, you fat little cunt. You're boring. And then, even, even Germany's rivers kind of backstab it. Nothing personnel, kid. You know, because they have all these rivers, like to all these places, that is so much economic opportunity, right? Except all the rivers lead in different directions away from Germany. So if you're a city or town that's sat on the Rhine, you're gonna be you're gonna be looking towards the Dutch and like towards Belgium. You don't wanna fucking the Poles aren't your problem. Everything east of where Franconia used to be, it's not your problem. If you're in Bavaria, 
You're on the Danube. Your your main business partner is the Austrians, not the rest of your country. So there's no there's no reason to look inward towards the center of the country to for any sort of like economic opportunity because all the rivers go outside of Germany, which I think is a really interesting thing to look at. Uh, and I will definitely be incorporating that into some kind of world building, whatever. Now, Germany for, I, I don't know who here wouldn't know, but um, Germany is very new compared to other countries in Europe. Uh, it united <laughs> for the first time in like 1870, uh, whereas most of the other nations that held dominance over Europe uh, came into being like a thousand years ago. And even Brandenburg, which again, we're going to call proto-Germany here, didn't start centralizing properly until the colonial period, way later than everyone else. And they, let's, you know, let's give it, let's give them credit where credit's due. They took their best shot with the Holy Roman Empire, but it, it just didn't pan out. It didn't pan out. It is too many, too many, well, a lot of mistakes. There isn't, there isn't one, but a lot of mistakes. And in addition to all this, because Germany didn't have any of that ocean access until 1720, they did not get any of the benefits of new deep water navigation technology that was invented somewhere around like the Renaissance period. That's how, you know, Columbus popped over to the Americas, did a little, did a little genocide, did a little word I can't say that rhymes with grape. But yeah, they missed out on like a huge economic boom for everyone else in Europe. And they were just sat there in the middle of the continent going, damn. damn. However, one thing changed all that. Industrialization. Please, I trust you for zero reasons. Also, we are fighting, but no, I would like this. You to take my pee pee, please, and treat it like a lollipop, as I have requested here. Treat it like a lollipop. Of course you shall do this. You shall definitely not treat it like a hamburger, like a hamburger. I, I, no, no, of course. What? Of course. Of course this man shall make your, your, your pee pee into a luncheon. I, I shall not be nice and make it a lily pip. He do not like you. He's not your friend. If you've ever wondered why uh, the German stereotype is to be like super industrious and hard work. Well, okay, there are other stereotypes. But one of the big ones is Germans being super industrious and hardworking. Um, and if you want to know why that is, this is why. Germany, strategically speaking, has it so bad. It is in such a shit position, militarily speaking, that Germany, in order to survive, even as like a broken mess of states that you might call an empire, which, all right, let's be fair. I know about Voltaire's famous quote, the Holy Roman Empire was not Holy Roman nor an empire. Shut the fuck up. It was Holy Roman and an empire back around the time of, like, Henry III. Or, which was in the 11th century. I'm just saying it was like that once. But, you know, at the, at the point in time of Germany coming together, no, it's not. Also, Napoleon just fucking... <laughs> Napoleon just kind of dunked on the Holy Roman Empire, just made it... Made it uh, die ah! but because they had no real centralized state and were in such a shit strategic and were in such a shit strategic position everything germany did just kind of had to be better than everyone else like they needed to have a better military they needed to have better schools they needed to have better manufacturing and a better working government and i know i know the meme for germany is like Oh, God gave Germans super manufacturing industrious ability and then gave them bureaucracy to balance it out, which fair enough. Everything I've heard about German bureaucracy sounds like it sucks ass. But there are a couple times where it actually did its job. Local government, especially in uh, historically, has been super effective at doing what it needs to do because I mean, who else was going to save you? The fucking emperor? No. Imagine you live in baden Wittenberg, for instance, and you look just across the Rhine and, oh, there's France. Helen's tomorrow. Hello, Hello. <laughs> Yo!
with way more power, way more economic growth, and way more men than you have. And then you look at your friends. Bavaria is busy dealing with Austria. The Rhineland's too focused on the Dutch. There's got to be something in there that explains the German-Dutch rivalry. And Berlin's busy fighting the Russians. The only way, the only way to survive if you're Baden-Württemberg, or I guess back in the day you would have either been Baden or Württemberg. The only way to survive if you're Baden-Württemberg is by being efficient and organized. Because that's all you got. And every single state had to incorporate this policy of being super efficient and super organized because otherwise they die this is this is how germany managed to build a an entire national rail network by 1840 30 years before the german empire was even a thing germany wasn't united yet and they still built a national rail network which by the way that rail network super important because it basically negates the whole all your rivers face an outward problem because now it doesn't cost that much to transport stuff over land because you could do it by rail. So people can start looking inward towards the center of the country. And I don't think it's a coincidence that the network came before the country. I think the, I think the written rail network played a big part in making the country. Because without it, you wouldn't have the ability to centralize things onto the internal aspect of that piece of land. It was also the first thing that kind of encouraged german states to sort of disassociate from foreign powers that they already had really strong ties with and focus more on their relationships with other german states germany is a rare example in my opinion because i hate the government but it is a rare example of a government taking national planning to like a thousand and actually kind of having it work out but i think this really only worked because of cultural factors like all this stuff wouldn't have been possible if they hadn't had that thousand years of Holy Roman Empire that was just defunct as a, like, overlord-type government. Because in Ger Germany is also one of the few places where local government is, at least from what I've heard, is a quite high calling. It's a good, it's a good thing to aspire to. And then you also have the addition of, you know, everyone has to be efficient and organized, which is why you have the Prussian model of schooling uh, emerge, where the Prussian model basically... It, it, Prussia had mandated schooling before most other countries. I'm, I'm not sure if they were the first in Europe, but they were one of the first. And they designed their curriculum to make everyone work like to make everyone kind of work together like a machine and you know take orders and do things efficiently and just you know um we have that system in america it does not work out quite so well for us but you have the schooling you have manufacturing you have all this stuff that just kind of all these little all these little little puzzle pieces that assemble together into one underdog story of like the shittiest possible strategic position eventually coming out on top as a military power and an economic power and then going a little too far with that and by a little i mean like way 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 too much way too much and then taking the whole economic power thing and going way 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 too much with that and now the balkans keep asking you for money anyway yeah that was just a short little video about uh my fascination with germany and sort of the history the little i don't i don't i don't know words it was a cool idea i had and i put it together and i hope you enjoyed it and if you want to like use this knowledge to show off to your friends or like do study study your german states if you ever go and hang out with german people figure out where they are i i thought i thought bavaria and baden württemberg were swapped for like a month and i didn't notice uh and then i got called out on it uh and it didn't feel great but okay hit the buttons do the thing yeah hope you enjoyed i'll be back 
uh, with more whatever this bullshit I'm doing is. Yeah. Bye. Do not give this man your your pee pee. Your uh, it, it's a hamburger. It's a whopper for this person, or a Big Mac. Well, what is I don't know what is the equivalent for your pee pee. Uh, uh, a White Castle burger. But do not do it. Stop it. I do not give my pee pee like this to to a friend and make this requesting. S of course not for enemy man. You're only owning one pee pee. You're not like a man. I'm now make a guess of from the National Geography uh, show where man has five hundred pee pees just surround his torso. He may give one of the pee pees to a man and say suck my d because now I still have four hundred ninety nine pee pee. What? No, you cannot do this. You're only owning one pee pee. Protection, it please. Don't say this. Say another insulting like. Hey, man, you smell bad and your face look like a goose.